Um, you know, there are, there are many things that are analogous to this period, this capitalist crisis, and the 30s. There are some things that are not analogous. There are distinctions, but there are many things that are analogous. It's actually worth having a conference on it, uh, and it would be a good thing. But it would be better if it wasn't just a conference organized by academics and armchair revolutionaries and scholars, and they may produce some interesting information and books and papers, and that's all good and well. It's better if it happens that it be revolutionaries and activists, you know, who want to change the world, you know, and, and not just, you know, analyze it, who, do, who does it. But it, it, I think more and more you're going to be uh, 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 hear people talking and writing about the analogies. And so Paul's report, in a way, is, is right on time. Um, uh, one of the things that is clearly analogous, and, and I think that's like the, there was a spine of, of Paul's report, is that ultimately the working class and its organizations realize that they had to wake up, get up, get together, and fight for their own interests, and no one was going to do it. And this was the turning point. And if you don't understand that, then you don't understand why there's Social Security, you don't understand why there was a jobs program, you don't understand why there were new labor laws that were more helpful to workers, you don't understand any of the gains. That was what happened, you know. Uh, and it, it, it takes us to what we're trying to do here. Uh, and even, you know, some of the, uh, the perspective of January 16th. We realize that we're not going to win jobs. Uh, with a symbolic uh, occupation of whatever we do on, on Monday, the, the King Federal holiday. Uh, what we hope that we'll do is we'll get a lot of activists, we'll get some unemployed, we'll bring a good group together, and we'll also be prepared to use social media we're not going to be, you know, uh, depending on major bourgeois media. Maybe they'll come, maybe they won't. But, we're, but even if they don't, we're making sure that, you know, we're going to use social media and the internet, internet to spread the word. Is to let people know that the unemployed are beginning to get organized. And equally important, activists and revolutionaries are turning toward the task of organizing the unemployed. Because January 16 in Occupy for Jobs is really about trying to launch a long campaign to organize the unemployed. And you've heard in the report and the comments about the Communist Party and other socialists and revolutionary organizations. They are not what they were then today. They're weaker. In some instances, they don't exist. That's a whole nother question. That's for a whole nother meeting, you know. But, but the important thing is to understand that without them, without their role, there would have been no mass organization. It's a wonderful and idealistic thing to say, well, the unemployed are just going to organize themselves. And that may happen and can happen. Slaves organize themselves. But you know, <laughs> it's, it's much better if committed, dedicated revolutionaries help. Let me tell you how much difference it makes. About a thousand percent. And that was the significance of the role of the communists. Now we have to rebuild that. And this is where I think OWS comes in. Because OWS has, you know, set into motion thousands of people, uh, not completely, but, but mostly young people with a lot of energy. And now that they've done this, some of them, in our view, need to turn toward those sectors of the working class, especially the unemployed and the underemployed, maybe the immigrants, and help lift them up, help them to organize, uh, you know, the uh, uh, 2012 version of the unemployed leagues. This is very, very necessary. 
And whether it happens or does not happen, some of us happen to believe it's going to be very decisive over the next few years. This is a big thing. It's a big strategic thing. We've got to talk about it. We've got to meet about it. If it's helpful, we need to write about it. But, but, but some of the revolutionary youth that now are in motion have to turn toward the workers. We can't just wait on the labor leaders. Some of them are good, some of them are better than others, but they got problems. That's a subject for another meeting. We can't just rely on them. Look what OWS did. You know, OWS did not ask the permission of labor leaders to occupy Wall Street. A lot of us think that we have to do that, but we just learned that you don't have to do that. But look what happened when they occupied Wall Street and began occupying Oakland and occupying LA and occupying Atlanta and occupying Chicago, you know, and have mass demonstrations. The labor movement was energized. And they said, wait a second, maybe we should do what they're doing. So think about it. They did not ask anybody's permission. They did not ask for a meeting. They did not ask for an endorsement. They didn't ask for a dollar. But look, they had a big impact on the labor movement. And, and, and sometimes this is the impact of revolutionaries on other layers in the working class. If somebody doesn't start something, then other sectors that are, for whatever reason, less inclined to move first, they don't move at all. And that's one of the reasons why whatever happens in the future, and I'm sure there'll be more to OWS, everybody owes a big debt to OWS. Uh, some of us are even thinking, so even thinking about March 6. Why? Because uh, those of you labor historians will remember that in addition to some of the dates uh, and, 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 and historic iconic events that Paul raised, you know, the, the Veterans March in 33 or 34, uh, the first mass demonstration of unemployed people uh, in the wake of the Depression was on March 6, 1930. And because of international coordination amongst communists, actually it was declared an international day, international unemployment day. And there were demonstrations from Europe to Union Square. And we haven't decided, and we want to talk about it, but some of us are thinking about trying to see if we can do that this March 6th. Maybe it's premature with all the elections, you know, taking attention away, but we're considering it because sometimes those kind of things, you know, are helpful to getting the unemployed together. The, 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 the reason why we are calling for uh, uh, New York being declared an unemployment emergency is because we can use that to demand that unemployed people, number one, have moratorium on evictions, moratorium on utility cutoffs, so that they will have their home and their heat and their light and electricity during the winter and whatever. Also that they have free subway use, just in case there is a job, like you know, uh, one job for every thousand unemployed people. At least they'll have the ability to go look for that job and other things. You know, it, it's interesting that while fighting for jobs was always central for the unemployed movement back then, it was survival thing that actually, you know, uh, uh, was the reason for many of the most militant struggles. It was the struggle not to be evicted more than anything else, both in New York and around the country. That became the defining struggle of the unemployed. Just because I don't have a job and can't pay my mortgage or rent, you cannot evict me and a thousand people are coming to my house on the appointed day and you ain't going to do it. It, it became a defining struggle. So we're, we're, looking at, we're, we're looking at all these things. And, and, and on, on Monday, January 16th, however many people are there, we realize that some are going to come but are not in a position to occupy. Family, job, whatever, legal reasons. And that's good. 
and there will be a role. Everybody doesn't have to participate. Not even the majority of the people who come have to participate in the occupation. However, we want to make sure that enough people, we want to make sure that enough people are prepared to occupy and all that that involves. And so we're asking for people to think about that now. So when we get to our site of occupation, we'll have some people who are prepared indeed to stay there. Thank you.